Hello and welcome, this is Mouse Gunner, and I'm going to be starting a brand new series on my channel of the game Farming Simulator 19. I've already done a live stream of this game, which I should have already posted the footage of that on YouTube, but this is going to be a dedicated series specifically to YouTube, as I feel like this game lends to a little bit more of a edited style, where I can edit out some of the lulls in the game so you guys can see the progress of the playthrough without the videos being overly long. So when I get to working on a field, for example, I'll start the process, but I'll probably put a cut in and then get to the end of where I'm finishing up the field. More than likely is how I'm gonna uh, go with this series. So with that being said, I'm still a beginner player and I'm going to be doing a number of things that will be new for me. So to keep things somewhat simple, I am going to play on one of the the maps that come with the game but it's not going to be a map that I've spent a lot of time on I spent most of my time on Ravenport so we're going to be doing Felsbrunn instead and I'm going to be doing the farm manager start rather than new farmer which is what I've done with all my previous playthroughs so there'll be some learning process with this as well so let's go ahead and select that as I said we're going to be on uh, Felsbrunn uh, I already have my character all set up I will be using a number of mods, and they're all listed here. I will go through them, but I also have all the DLC for the game as well. So it's a number of things. Mostly it's going to be a focus on tractors and things like that. Uh, so let me just go ahead and scroll through so you guys can see everything. So you get an idea where we're at. Now, one of the tractors I really want to use is this Mercedes-Benz one. I really like it. Not exactly sure what I would want to use it for, but we'll figure things out as we go. So, this will be the first playthrough I'm doing with, with mods, really. Most of the rest of my playthroughs have been uh, pretty much the stock game outside of the DLCs. So, let's go ahead and continue there. And once we load in here, it's going to be about evaluating what land we want to start on. I'm probably going to pick up the same pieces of land that you would have if you're doing the new farmer start. Because those are the fields I'm familiar with, and it does put us in a convenient spot close to where the store is, and I have an obvious place to place the uh, various buildings we need to put down. So, starting out here, this would be your normal starting location if you're doing the new farmer start, but you would start with buildings and uh, various equipment. But we don't get any of that. We just get an amount of money, which is up in the upper right corner. So we've got uh, 1.25 million to work with. Uh, one thing I want to just double check before we go too far. I'm going to pause because time does go while you are paused. And I'm a beginner player, so I'm going to try and explain things as I go. Hopefully I don't go through things too fast, but there's quite a learning curve to this game. And I will admit I have not grasped every concept that is in this game yet, but I'm trying to work on it. Uh, but one thing I do want to check here is I want to make sure that all the settings are where I want them. So time scale is five times. Now, one piece of advice that I did see when you're planning, you're going to want to put it on real time. I'm going to try and remember to do that. I might forget every so often. And the reason why I want to do that is because sometimes when you are planning a field, if you have it at the faster time scale, one half of the field will grow at a different rate than the other. And that makes things somewhat inconvenient. Economic difficulty, normal is fine with me. Traffic on, fine. Uh, the speed at which your machinery becomes dirty, whatever, normal is fine. Uh, I don't like stop and go braking. Pretty much, if you do stop and go braking, if you hold in, uh, let's say, I'm using controller because I just find it uh, easier, but I am playing on PC. If I hold in the right trigger to accelerate and then I hold in uh, the left trigger to brake, if I keep holding it in, it, once I come to a stop, it will just start reversing me with the stop and go braking. I don't like that. I like to know that I'm to a full stop and then I'm not just going to suddenly start reversing. I, I just find that too herky-jerky and it, it confuses me at times. So I usually turn that off, but that's just a personal preference. I'm probably going to turn most of the rest of the things just as they are plant growth is on normal this is something if you do the uh, beginner start it will be on fast plant growth and i honestly don't like that i think it grows way too fast um, so this gives us more time to think about things we have plant withering i have not played with this yet but i think i'm gonna leave that on 
Crop destruction, that's fine. Periodic plowing required, I might have been on and I accidentally turned it off, but that's okay, I'll leave it off. Lime required, though, I'm okay with. So, all of that looks okay. Yeah, weeds, nah, I'm fine with all the rest of that, but I just need to make sure that we're good to go there. I have everything set up to be Eurocentric because we are in a European location, at least I believe so, so Euro kilometers. And that's just to fit the setting. Oh, <laughs> again, I almost, I just accidentally switched one of the things. All right, there we go. So. Let's go ahead and go to our field and see what we have to work with. So I would like to buy field 20 and 19, but what's on the fields right now? So this is 20, this is 19. We're here. So I believe that's sugar beets on 20 based off the color. And then 19 is possibly potatoes. So those are two crops we are not going to want. And... I'm going to have, because it requires specialist uh, equipment to harvest them, which is probably going to be outside our budget to start off here, unless we are specifically going for that. And potatoes and beets, they both require specialist equipment, but they require different specialist equipment. So that's not really going to be good for us. So we're going to need to get rid of them. And they also have a special thing where you're going to have to plow after them. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but you, yeah, you see needs plowing. So we're going to need to plow it. So that's another extra step. I don't really want a plow, so I may not buy one, but I could lease one and just get the plowing done with in that case. All right. So I usually like to keep it on the growing here. So let's go to uh, the lands. And let me get my mouse off here because I don't need it right now. Uh, I'm going to select that guy. And buy it. So we're going to be 100, 181,000, 182. I'll just round that up. So buy. That's going to be where our one field, but also where we're going to be building our house. So that's pretty important for us. And then we're going to also buy this guy here, which is going to cost a little less. Although the field on it is much bigger. It's less overall total land, I believe. I don't know if it values the crops either. That's one thing I don't really know. But let's just go ahead and buy that. Okay, so that's going to be it for our initial purchases. Let's unpause. And I'm also going to want to do the buildings here. So... Let me run over and we'll do some of our basic building structures. So I definitely want a farmhouse. That's going to be pretty much required for us to be able to sleep. So let's do that. It's 180,000. Um, which way is the front door currently? I believe it is facing. I want the house over here, but I want it facing. Uh, how do I rotate? There we go. I want it facing this away. Uh, so the goal here is not to pay any landscaping fees if I can avoid it. So like if I come over here, it's having to level out ground or, or what have you. So it's costing a little bit more. So uh, my goal is to get that kind of where I want it to be, but with like minimal, minimal landscaping fees. If I can get that, swing that. I mean, kind of, I kind of want it right there, but... A little bit of landscaping fees if I do that. I want some room to move, so I don't want to pull it too far. You know, honestly, this might be okay. It's going to pull some uh, pavement in, which is probably mostly what we're paying for here. But yeah, I think that's a good, good enough spot. I'm not going to be too picky with some of the stuff, although I, I'm going to have to clean up at least one of these because the silo is one of them. I'm going to go with the uh, large one here as it has double the capacity, but it's not double the price. So I think that's a good value. And I think it normally is placed here, uh, but I believe it's rotated around. But you know what? I think I like the pickup point being facing that way as opposed to the other way. It gives me more room to move. And honestly, what's going to be over here anyway? I mean, maybe my, my goal would be to get chickens. Maybe we end up putting the chickens over there, possibly over in that little triangular spot by where that car is, the white car. But I think this one right here is okay. Let me just make sure it's yeah, somewhat centered. Eh, that looks okay to me. So we get it so it's not charging us anything extra. What does this thing normally cost? Yeah, 180. All right, so it's going to cost us a little extra to place it where I want to. It doesn't look like we can get around it. So I'll place it right there. I was going to put a whole bunch of ugly pavement. I'll fix that because that looks terrible to me, honestly. And then there's one more building I want to get. 
this is not a necessary thing. The silo and the farmhouse are, but the one thing I do want is I want to shed, and this is just going to keep things tidy. So, again, we're going to rotate. And I think I'm going to stick it right where there's this little bit of a, a corner here. I'm going to stick it right there. That'll be a good place. Let's just make sure it's somewhat straight. Uh, I'm going to need a different camera angle. That looks about right. So let's stick it right there. 9,000 doesn't look like we're paying anything extra for that. Yeah, there we go. That works for me. Okay, so those are all the basic buildings. I would like to do a little bit of landscaping just to fix that. So I'm going to go to change landscaping mode to painting. And then I want to change it to uh, square because I think it'll be just easier to manage. And then I would like some grass. Um, that will do. And we'll just come over and paint over some of this uh, mess. It'll cost me a little bit of money to do this and it's, it's totally not necessary what I'm doing. Uh, but I just like to clean this up a little bit. Let me, uh, how do I change the radius? So let's make this a little smaller. Try and clean this up a bit. It's not going to look perfect because the square is, you know, it's only going to be so precise. But we'll clean it up so it looks okay. I'm not sure if I like the edge of that pavement. Uh, it looks like it overlapped a little bit. I don't know if I can clean that up any further, though. All right, let me... There's one spot over here I'd like to clean up, and then I'm probably going to clean up the edge here so it's in line with the gravel. Let me uh, zoom in. How do I zoom in? Camera zoom. All right, we'll clean this edge up a little bit as well. Just so it, it kind of matches the gravel that's next to it to the left and right. Just looks a little nicer. I'm not overly worried about how nice all these buildings look, but I'd like it to be somewhat aesthetically pleasing. Okay, that looks all right to me. The grass, I think, will grow in as time goes on. I think the only edge I'm not too keen on is right where the grass meets the pavement here, but... Uh, it's probably close enough. We'll see it, I guess, once we exit the landscaping. All right, so that's all the buildings we need. Now it's going to be a matter of buying our equipment. And I would like to go with some of the modded equipment, but some of it's going to be based off of... Yeah, so if we look here, that doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I think I could be all right with that. Oh, the grass is growing on top of it. Okay, that's, that's a problem for me. I'm going to have to fix that. <laughs> Because it, it, it looks weird to have the grass growing like that. I think I can fix it. We just have to figure out the right color of pavement here. I don't think it's the, the light. So there's... Two shades of pavement here. I think it's this darker one. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, how are we going to fix this? Well, let's do it here and see what it looks like. Okay, that is the right shade. Yeah, that looks good. It's going to be a little bit of overlap into that, but I think it looks much nicer and we get rid of the grass on top of the um, little cement ledge there. Uh, that might do it there, because I don't think we did anything with these corners over here. All right, that looks much nicer, and I'm happier with that. Okay. So the question is, how much money do we have still to work with? We have 523000 which sounds like a decent amount, but equipment is quite expensive. So let's think through the process of what it is we want. So equipment-wise, we're going to need a set of things. So trailer, that is... I think we're going to go with this one. Capacity-wise... Uh, now, this is kind of misleading. It says it's 12,000 liters, but... That's if you fully upgrade it. The one that's the actual base price is only 4000 whereas this one, I don't think there's any upgrade to it, so it's going to be that uh, 10750 at that price. So this is a really good value. So I think we're going to go ahead and buy one of these, as we will need it. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to have another trail I'm going to pick up later, but that's going to be down the road when we actually get this tr the chickens established. We know we're going to need a plow or a subsoiler, but I'm probably going to aim towards leasing that. Now, one thing uh, I'm going to need, though, is also to be able to plant crops as well as harvest them and all that. So we're going to have to think about the process of what we need. So let's start with the harvester because that's going to be probably the most expensive thing we do. Although we might want to know what our budget is first. Okay, we'll, we'll go to that one last because I might want to know what my budget's like before we get to that. So cedar. One cedar I'd like to try is this uh, coon one because there's a interesting uh, setup you can do with this. With Whenever there's a puzzle piece, it's telling you that you can use this equipment with other equipment. Now this one is interesting because it doesn't come with any capacity. So normally a cedar, like for example this one, would have a capacity for seeds, or in this case, seeds and fertilizer. Well, this this one does not have that. Instead, you have to use this hopper uh, to supply the seeds. So you need both of these sets of equipment for this thing to work. But we have another set of equipment that will work with this. But one thing I do have to keep in mind is the power requirements. So we need 100 horsepower. So that's going to be one thing that's really important for us. And then the other piece of equipment that I would like to use simultaneously would be this power harrow, which if we see that puzzle piece, it says BTF 4000, which is the BTF 4000. So we know those two things can attach. Pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to attach this to the front, then the uh, cedar will be behind it, and then your hopper will be in front of whatever tractor you use. And all three of those things will work together. So this is going to cultivate our field. The cedar will plant. Now some cedars will do kind of both things, or they really don't need to have the cultivation, is, is technically how that works. But I'd like to do this combo. So that's what I'm going to aim for. It also has a good reach of four meters, uh, which is good not only from a cultivator standpoint, but from the cedar standpoint too. So I like this combo. I, I'd like to try it as it's one I have not used before. So another 100 horsepower. I'm going to assume that we need to add those two power requirements together. So let's say 200 horsepower is our, our goal for whatever tractor we end up using this. So we're going to go ahead and buy this guy. We're going to buy the cedar. This guy. And then we're going to buy the hopper. Okay. So we've got our cultivating and our seeding or sowing taken care of. We've got our transportation taken care of. We're going to need fertilization, so that's going to be our next step. And we will eventually need lime as per our settings. So this can do both spreading of fertilizer and lime. Do I have any mods that would work with this? This one's just fertilizer. This one's just fertilizer. That one's just fertilizer. Okay, so I don't have the dual roll here. I really like the dual roll. And I've used this one before, so I'm fairly familiar with it. It's a fairly good uh, piece of equipment. Now, there are mods we can do to it. We can extend its capacity, but I happen to know 9,000 liters is quite a lot. And with the size fields we have, that will do fine for the time being. So we're fine with that. I don't really see any reason to set anything else up, although I could put narrow tires on this guy. I'm not going to, because I do have kind of a game plan for that. So we're just going to go ahead and buy this. And then the next thing we're going to need is crop protection. So for this, I do have DLC for this uh, Coverland one, and it is cheaper, but it does reach less area, 18 meters versus uh, 21. Capacity-wise, 1,300, 1,800. So this has much more capacity. What is that piece of equipment? The iExtra 1,100 Comfort? I'm not familiar with that piece of equipment. And this is one of the things, I don't really have a search field to be able to figure out what that is. Oh, it's this. <laughs> the thing right next to it. It just extends the capacity. Okay, that's good to know. Whereas this guy can attach to this guy, but it can also attach to a weight, I believe, is the SB1000. I think I'm going to go with the Coverland. It would be nice to have the the extended arms on this guy you can modify the cover land to have greater reach but it costs quite a bit to do that and you're actually going to be paying more uh it, it's more reach uh because at this point it's 24 meters versus the 21 but it's thirty-five thousand. 
I think I'm going to cut costs and we'll use the 18 meter one. It may cause me to have to do multiple passes, but we have kind of big fields that are going to make me have to do that anyway. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm not sure if it's the best choice for what we're doing, but hopefully it's smaller and lighter weight than the other one. So that's what I'm going to go for. Go we'll buy that. It's a little bit cheaper. Okay. So I'm pretty sure we've got all our bases covered. There might be one thing I'm overlooking here or there. And I know there's some things we're going to need for our chickens that I haven't gotten yet, but we'll get there. The only other thing we really need is a header, but we have to figure out what harvester we want. So where are we at on money right now? 406,000, so we still have a decent amount. I think what I would like to do is figure out how what our tractor cost is going to be first. And then go from there. Whoops, I didn't mean to go to that menu. I went to the, meant to go here. Okay, so tractors. I want to use that Mercedes. But I'm going to need a tractor that has at least 200 horsepower power requirement. We know that. Now the Mercedes, if I remember correctly, can do front loading. Now it starts at a 45,000, but there's a lot of mods you can do that's going to increase that, mod, that price quite a bit. So uh, let's see. Uh, front attachment, decals, terminals. Yeah, front loader. So we can set up a front loader on this guy if we want. I'd like to have at least one tractor set up that way. But I think we really only need two tractors. Is what it comes down to. And if we're looking to save money, I might go with this guy. Doesn't have a lot of power. Uh, I should check real quick. Did the sprayer have a power requirement? I don't think it would, but just double check. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, I don't see a power requirement on here, so we might be good to use that small tractor. Uh, this one here, because it's fairly cheap. It's not the most powerful tractor in the world, but it's fairly cheap. And we can set that up with narrow tires, and that will do the spraying job for me. I like to have a specialist tractor for that. If it's not going to cost me a lot of money... And this is all I'm going to use it for. I think that's acceptable. So we'll go ahead and buy this guy. So 46000 I think that's reasonable. So that leaves me with 360000 The harvest is going to be the most expensive thing we buy. But the tractor I'm going to have to buy is possibly going to be expensive too. Because I need a medium tractor. And there aren't a lot of tractors that can meet the power requirements of 200 horsepower. I know this case can if you upgrade the engine. Uh, what's its max? 261. We only need 200, so 214 would do it. So the 7230 Pro would do the yeah, would get the job done, and it wouldn't really cost. It cost 120,000. We might be able to get something cheaper than that. Let's see. And the problem is I can't do a front loader. That's one reason I don't know if I'd want to do that one. I'm pretty sure the New Holland can't get that much power. This other case can't. Steyr maybe. No, 175 is as good as it can do. But I'd like to have one that has a front loader attachment, possibly. John Deere, I don't think, can have that kind of power, but we'll, we'll double check. Oh, I'm on the... There we go. Yeah, that's 164. The Star, I'm fairly certain can't. The Voltra might be able to. Let's see what it can do. Well, it's already at 200. So we don't even have to modify it. So what it costs quite a bit more, but it does have a front loader attachment. Alternatively, we have the Massey Ferguson. They're both fairly close in price. This vehicle is equipped with reverse drive control. I don't really know what that is. I'm going to go with the Massey Ferguson, and, and this is kind of a contrived reason, but I'm going with the Massey Ferguson because it's going to be batching the colors of the other equipment we bought. I will check real quick if there's a mod, though, uh, that would suit our needs. Well, I guess this tractor would suit it. It's 240 horsepower. It is red, but it doesn't have the front, uh, front loader attachment. Lamborghini is kind of expensive. Uh, I assume the Kloss here isn't powerful enough. Let's let's see if we can set it up. 205, but it's 150,000, which I believe is going to be more expensive. So yeah, this, this guy here would do the job. 240 horsepower. It just it doesn't have a front loader, which kind of limits me. So I think I'm going to go with the Massey Ferguson here. I believe it was this one. Wait, 150,000 for the Kloss? I did read that right. Oh, 
Okay, well, that would be definitely cheaper then. Um, and I'm pretty sure it can do a front loader. Okay, we'll be using this. It does, it's not color matched, but it is the most uh, efficient from a cost perspective. Um, let's see what we want to do with the tires. Wheel weights might be a good idea because of the front loader. Uh, wide tires, wide tires with wheel weights. Yeah, I think I'm going to lean towards that. So we've got the front loader attachment. We've got the, uh, the, the tire set up. Engine is at 205. That's the most powerful engine that can be fit in here. Yeah, that seems good. It's, it's a good price, and it fits what we need. So we'll go ahead and buy that. I'm just double-checking, 205. Yeah, okay, good. All right. So now that we have that, we're going to want the front loader stuff. Might as well buy that now. So that's going to be under front loaders. Um, I'm pretty sure the stall is what it attaches to. Well, we'll find out if that's the wrong thing. Uh, so 150 horsepower or 90 horsepower. I mean, we know we have the power, but I think I'm just going to go with the 90 one. I can always change my mind later, I guess. It's not like they're super expensive. Buy. Uh, the gray color is fine. It, it kind of matched what the uh, the attachment for the front loader was anyway. It might not be quite the right color gray, but hey, it won't charge us anymore if we don't change the color. And then what I initially want is a universal bucket. Oh, you know what? There's a different... Ah, I didn't notice that. So there's different classes. Okay, so that was a mistake. I will sell that. We'll lose a little bit of money on it. But I will sell that piece of equipment. I should have checked before I went over here. I assume it's still the same normal attachments because I don't see uh, specific class ones. But um, so, oh, I have to attach it to a specific. Okay, what which tractor did we end up buying? Let me go to garage. We got the 660. Okay. Um, so let me go back to. Uh, so yeah, it'd be this one. Okay, a little bit more expensive, but. Uh, it is what it is. All right. Let's go ahead and buy that. All right. Yeah, I should have checked that before I bought. Okay, and then we're going to want the bucket initially. Uh, if we get chickens, this is a way I can clean up after them. So we also want a pallet fork at some point. Uh, you know, honestly, we're probably going to want that first. So I'll wait on the bucket. Buy the pallet fork. Uh, it's gray. Let's color it to a class green because it seemed like the arms were that color this will cost me some money but it's only 200 euros so i'm not too worried about it okay okay that should be all of our equipment except for the harvester so how much money do i have left 191 that should be enough i do have a loan at least i think so let me check that uh yeah we have a loan of 250,000. that's something we can slowly pay off so i'm not too worried about it all right, let me go ahead and get our harvester. What I would like would be a, maybe the Nova 330 here. Unfortunately, I don't, I, I can't afford the Activia here. It's between these three, pretty much. Let's see if I have a mod. I know I have one mod. It was a, a case uh, harvester that's probably within our budget. It's more expensive. But I believe it covers more area, if I remember correctly. We'll double check that. We'll look at the headers. I think it's headers cheaper, but it covers more area. But let me let me double check that. So we've got 105 or 145. Both of which we can technically afford. But let me make sure with the header on top of all that. We'll probably not have a lot of money. So this is the one for the Nova 330. It's 32,000, so that'd be 137,000. That'd give us that give us a decent amount of money left over. Whereas I'm trying to remember, it probably is a mod. Yeah, it's this guy here. Uh, so this is 28,000. So it's cheaper by 4,000. But again, the harvester is more expensive. Uh, this covers 4.3 meters. But uh, it, our cost would be, I think, 170 something. So we wouldn't have a lot of money left over if I picked that. But 4.2 meters versus 5. Oh, this covers more. Okay. 
Probably the advantage of the other Harvester is more capacity. I don't think the Nova 330 has very much. Well, we're going to go with the Nova because I think that's what we can afford. And I have enough experience with the, the New Holland Harvester that I'd like something different. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this. And then let's go back to the Harvesters because we haven't actually bought it yet. So let's just compare. So 4,500 capacity versus the 5,600 of the New Holland. Uh, slower speed, but more power. And then the case, which was our other possible for what we can afford, uh, has a little bit more power, definitely more capacity at uh, 6,340. About the same speed, so not a lot of difference there. So I think we'll just go ahead with the, the Nova here. We already bought the header anyway, so... Okay. So that's going to be all of our purchases. We come out with 54,882. A lot of that was because I had to buy a little bit more expensive tractor with that medium tractor. Now, I am going to avoid doing a lot of teleportation in the future. Oh, there's one thing I need to buy that I forgot about now that I'm jumping into this tractor. Let me buy that now before I forget. I'm not super experienced in this game, so I don't know what the best pick for a weight is to balance things. But I think we should go with at least the SB700. Maybe go up to the SB1000. I think I'm going to spring for the, uh, the SB1000. Maybe it's overkill, but I'd like to balance out the weight of what we're going to have in the back here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to keep the default black. That's fine. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and pick up the sprayer now. I do have supplies to pick up too, so... We're going to want to do a lot of that here. Oh, and that's right. I do have to sell the one piece of equipment. The tricky thing is I, I can't pick it up like I normally would, so I'm going to try and nudge it into the sell bit here. You can sell it at any time, but it sells for more if we can nudge it into the um, little box here. <laughs> Alright, let's come at it from the other angle and we should be able to push it in. This is going to be our little tractor and all it's going to do is spraying. It's not a super fast tractor, but it's nice and affordable and it helps us out considering the expense of some of the other things we needed. Well, I say needed. We chose to use. Okay, now that should be inside. We're going to go ahead and sell it. We're going to lose a little money on it, but that's okay. My mistake. I've not worked with these claws tractors before, so I didn't know they had a different attachment. And possibly it would have worked. I should have tried it, but it's fine. We've got our color-coordinated setup. Okay. Attach that. We'll get our fork. All right, we're going to need to raise this up so it's out of the way. And I'm going to go get... I mean, honestly, I'll probably go dump this somewhere. But let me pick up... our little seed hopper in the front. Again, I don't know if this will work with the front loader on. It should. I almost wonder if it will let me... Yeah, it'll kind of let me be a little janky with it, but we'll get rid of some of this, uh, the front loader until we need it. All right, so the tricky thing is I need to get to the uh, cultivator first, but we have other things in the way, so we're just going to jump out of the claws for now. All right, so what do we want to send home first? Well, let's make sure we have the supplies we need before we send anything away. Harvester requires nothing, so let's just get that out of the way. That is not what I wanted to jump into. Maybe I need to be on this side. Yeah, that makes sense because there's the ladder. Okay. Oh, this has a beep, beep, beep. Do I have enough room to get in behind this thing? I'm going to say yes, but it's going to be tricky. <laughs> We're not going to do this elegantly, but that's okay. 
shove ourselves on it until it gives me the prompt. Hopefully I bought the right thing. Yeah, there we go. All right. We'll send this to the farm now. Although we won't need it for a little while. Because the crops that are on the field right now... I highly doubt we would have been able to afford the equipment to do anything. And again, maybe we would have if we had focused on that. But beets and potatoes, that, that wouldn't have been possible. We would have had to pick one. And I have no way of storing the beets or potatoes. With stuff that's in the default game, so... We'll just chug our way on home. So I'm going to try and avoid teleportation in this series as much as possible. But for this initial initial stage when I'm getting my equipment, we are going to need to do it because I'm not going to walk all the way to the store. So, But once I get the equipment where they need to be, from here on out, I'm going to try and avoid teleporting from one vehicle to another. I always have to remember to uh, lease that plow or subsoiler to get rid of these crops. All right, now let's get the other bit of equipment we need. We are getting pretty much to the end of what I would normally make a video. I think I'm going to extend this one a little bit so we can at least get started here. But most of this video has just been setting up the equipment we need. Which I expected to be what we covered. So that first. And you can see there's a three-point... Uh, attachment on the either other side of the cultivator, which is what we're going to use to attach to the cedar. But before we uh, go home, we're going to need seeds. So let me just pull off to one side here. And we'll buy that. I think I'm going to buy a pallet of it. You can buy them in big bags, but the pallets... Uh, we're going to need a decent amount anyway, so we'll go ahead and buy a pallet of 2,100 liters here. Okay. And we fill up on the front, so we'll go ahead and do that. And the front loader here will allow me to bring that pallet home, because we only have a capacity of 1,500, if I remember correctly, in the, in this, in the hopper on the front. So we just pull up until the cover comes off. We'll get a prompt do a button to fill it up and then over in the lower right we'll see uh, the seed going in all right so we're, we're done with all this equipment for right now well yeah so I'm gonna send that home Yeah, so I've never used any of these Klaus tractors, so this would be kind of an interesting trial of these tractors. We don't have the color matching with the equipment, but that's okay. This is pretty affordable. Alright. So we've got a lot of pieces of equipment here. This is what I call Voltroning. The process of using several pieces of equipment to achieve one task. Uh, I'm not sure which of these is going to be the seed hopper. I guess we'll just guess. Oh, whoops. I'm thinking it's going to be this guy. Hey, I guessed correctly. All right, for now, we'll just leave that. We also need the sprayer set up and then our fertilizer sprayer. And then we also have the... Let's put this arm down. It looks silly with it all up like that. Now, the one thing I'm curious with that coon equipment is how it's going to balance, because there's no way of me putting a weight on there because the uh, the hopper's in the front. So I assume the hopper is going to do the balancing. 
All right, let me go ahead and get the thing that I need for this, which is going to be fertilizer. We're going to need quite a few because there's only one way to buy this. It's going to be in bags, so... There is a building I got a mod for, but I haven't tried it out yet. I don't know how it works, but you can set up a lot of these things. I don't think we can afford them right now, even if I could. I mean, they'd be under... What would it be under? Silos, maybe? Could be miscellaneous. Yeah, these guys. So you can do a lot of these. I guess it's not really that expensive. You can refill your fertilizer spreaders at this tank. No, refilling will cost you a higher price for solid fertilizer than buying it in big bags at the shop. So I'm not sure if this is something I'm going to use, but I have the mod for it. And a lot of the mods I'm using are actually mods put up by Giant Software. I don't really know why they are mods and not just in the game. There might be a particular reason for that, but I have them here nonetheless. The tractor, that little tiny tractor I'm using, that's Giant Software as well. That Mercedes-Benz tractor that I kind of wanted to use is uh, not. That is uh, put up there by uh, uh, someone not affiliated necessarily, but... Unfortunately, I don't think I could afford it, even though I do like it. All right, well, anyway, let's let's get back on task, which is to get the fertilizer here, which is the solid. That's what we need. I'm going to buy five, I think, to start. So one, two, three, four, five. We won't need that much initially. Uh, and this thing can hold way more than that. We already have the prompt to fill up. So we'll just go ahead and do that. The bag will disappear once it's filled up. I'm going to pull around. Trailer's kind of in the way of what I want to do here. We have to get the trailer close enough to get at the fertilizer. I'm just waiting for the prompt. Not sure which bag we're pulling from right now. And I didn't really do any editing in this episode, but there wasn't really anything to edit out as far as I'm concerned. Most of it was just a decision process. I think I'm going to back the trailer in to where I want to go. At least attempt it. I think this particular trailer is not too bad to back up. That's one thing. I, I do play uh, the uh, Euro Truck Simulator, American Truck Simulator games, and... I am not the best at backing trailers up, but I haven't had too many problems in this game, I don't think. At least not with this trailer. I'm sure there's certain trailers that will give me problems. So again, we're not going to need this immediately. What? What we're going to need to do is process our fields, but I just want to get all the equipment over and staged because once we get on that work of processing the fields, we're going to want to get on on with the process and get it done kind of on one step. All right, so as far as I'm concerned for this video, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to set up the crop protection. So we're going to buy some uh, herbicide. And then other than that, I just have this trailer to take home. But we'll worry about that a little later. Let's do this first. So... This will be the last thing we need to buy for right now. I will ne eventually need liquid fertilizer with the setup I'm going to do. But for right now, we're just going to need this. So that's all I'm going to buy. And that's 2,000 liters. So our tank can only hold, I think it was, was it 1,800? So it's not going to quite get it. And we can always modify this thing to make the arms longer if we want to. Like, if we don't like the length of the arms, we think they're too short. One advantage of this is I can always I can always add that mod on, because it just adds another arm onto the end. Another arm section, I guess I should say. So this guy is more or less good to go. And our, our pallet fork will be able to pick up that pallet too if we want to take it home. So I don't know about the balance of the tractor. 
One thing I, I'm already kind of noticing is this tractor's not very tall. So I might have to manually lower the arms when we get to that. Because I'm just going to do this real quick before we end the video. So this mini video went about 10 minutes longer than I, I'm going to aim for. But with the edited nature of this series, I can't guarantee that the video is going to be consistent in length. But just to demonstrate a concern that I have right out the gate. It's not really a super concern. Oh, wait, whoop, we got to switch to the right tool. Yeah, see, that's actually touching the ground. That's not supposed to happen. So this, this tractor's not very tall. But we can manually lower the arms. I think I'm going to have to actually have the sprayer unfolded to demonstrate that. But when it comes to time, we'll do that. It could be the weight distribution. I did put... And a thousand kilogram weight on the front. At least I think that's what that was. But we're leaning quite to the rear. I think it will still work with what we got. But <laughs> maybe we didn't quite pick the right weight. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up here. I hope you guys have enjoyed the start to the series. And we'll go from here. My overall game plan is we're going to set up some chickens. So one of my fields I'm going to use to grow barley. And that's going to be supporting the chickens. And the other field is going to be our, our cash crop field. We're going to make whatever crop that we uh, can make some money off of on that field. And it's our bigger field. So hopefully that will work out. But that's pretty much the game plan. As I said, I hope you have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner signing out.